So let's talk about innovation and, and applying innovation, innovative thinking to social problems. Mm -hmm. Can you give me some examples of where Jockey Club has actually been sort of a vanguard of these kinds of principles in Hong Kong? Sure. Um, you know, again, sort of innovation, you know, many people when they talk about it yeah. always goes back to IT, you know, money making ventures, people getting rich very quickly. Mm. But if you think about the social issues that we face today, it, you know, it's as complex as any other time in history, mm. if not more. So we think that, you know, how do you apply innovation, technology and new thinkings? Uh, in addressing some of these social issues are very, very critical. Yeah. So one of the examples, we, we have recently decided to donate 500 million Hong Kong dollar for five years uh, into a uh, program, what we call the Career and Life Adventure Planning for Youth. Mm. Um, so basically what we try to do is to construct or help Hong Kong construct a curriculum for the high school students uh, whereby they can do self-discovery and whereby they can understand and learn more about the, the overall career world. Mm -hmm. So that help them you know, make a more informed choice uh, going forward. And this program also goes beyond schools. It also goes into non-engaged youth. So mm -hmm. we're doing that through five NGOs. Mm -hmm. uh, it also goes to you know, building an e-portal uh, and then help people basically through that uh, technology platform uh, do the same thing, sort of understanding mm -hmm. themselves and be more informed on their career decisions. Interesting. So uh, I imagine it augments the traditional education role that the schools are playing in, 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 the, in the curriculum and in the city. How does that kind of uh, interplay between student and career and learning sort of what the bigger world is right mm. ab about, how does that sort of set a more stable platform for business growth in general? Do you, do you feel like paying attention to social causes mm. actually has, you know, to bring back the money angle, mm. a actually good business outcome? Sure. I mean, I think at the end of the day, you know, what a good society is all about is not you know, just business. No. You know, but obviously, it's uh, to me anyway. You know, a good society is bigger than business. So, mm -hmm. so I would look at the, the, the question the other way around and say whether good business will bring about good society. And to us, a good society, there are many components. So, you know, a more um, you know, more energized uh, group of people, whether it's in youth or whether it's in, in elderly, mm -hmm. you know, these are also very, very critical to a stabilized society, if you will. And that mm -hmm. comes back, even if you were to say, you know, for good business per se, it comes back to help, you know, a, a, a good business. Sure. So I think that's uh, to us very, very critical. And therefore, I think the trust, the, the, the Jockey Cup Charities Trust, we have uh, developed a three-prone strategies going forward to say we'll try to address more directly you know, the issues in the social challenges in youth, uh, in elderly, and mm -hmm. also in sports. Mm -hmm. and particularly, we say it's sports for hope. So it's not just for elite sports, but mm -hmm. also you know, to build a lifelong positive value through sports Got it. in a way to energize the society. Sure. And you mentioned technology. How does that look in the interaction between, you know, social programs and, mm. and uplifting the society? I mean, well, if you look at technology today, um, globally, you know, technology is changing every single facet of the world. Mm -hmm. But then if you look at the NGO field, you know, mm. I wouldn't say just in Hong Kong, but even globally, you know, I think NGO can apply a lot more technologies than today. They can have a lot more understanding and try to use technology not just to generate profit, but also to solve some of the social issues. I'll give you an example. You know, recently we're um, thinking of, we're exploring an option whereby, you know, we all know Uber, mm. right? That mm. sort of is a platform matching individual needs on, uh, on, on, on cars, on transport. Now, wh what about volunteerism? Mm. How do you become a volunteer? How would institutions find volunteers? Can we do a platform using the same idea, but call it a volunteer Uber? Yeah. And you can also blend in a donor session whereby you know, people can also donate to that platform to encourage right. voluntarism. So these, I think, you know, are how you can apply technology in a social issue. Well, this is really interesting because I think one of the places where mobile actually, mobile and cloud and software actually mm -hmm. plays a really great role yes. is that you can accurately measure what the need is. Absolutely. And then you can accurately measure, well, what is on the supply side? What can I can actually Absolutely. provide to that? And it brings to mind another question of like, if, if you were to look at Hong Kong five years from now, and let's say this sort of mobile technology was incorporated, mm -hmm. what does a stable society look like that has given this sort of demand and supply intermatching uh, a careful consideration? What, how does that city operate in your view? Well, um, like what's the KPI for that? Like what, how do you say we've been successful supplying these ideas to this market and getting to this yeah, place? Yeah. 
I think, you know, throughout human history, you know, philosophers and people always ask for a perfect <laughs> society. Uh, and to me, that's a right question, but also a wrong question. Mm. Uh, it's a right question because it reflects the desire of humanity. You know, we want to be better. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good question to ask. But it's a wrong question to me because, you know, the society keeps evolving. Mm. So you never get to kind of a stable stage. You know, I think if people start to feel like we are in a stable stage, and that's probably the most dangerous stage. Mm. So to us, I think the question is, how do we then, you know, uh, for the betterment of Hong Kong, how do we then give more hope to people? Mm -hmm. How do we strengthen people's uh, skill sets, capabilities? How do we make them happier, you know, in their daily life? How do we take care of the people who cannot, you know, no, no longer take care of themselves? Yeah. I think those would be the yardsticks that we put to ourselves. We always, you know, within our team, recently there is a case I'd like to quickly share. Sure. There is, um, we, we have a fund called Emergency Relief Fund. Mm -hmm. So recently we have uh, donated some money to a widow who just uh, lost her husband. Mm. Uh, she didn't have any money for the funeral. Uh, so we gave her very quickly, within days, we gave her some money. Uh, and then within a week's time, she returned the money to us. Really? And she returned saying that, you know, she had some relatives and friends who, you know, are very kind enough to help her. Mm. So she felt like, you know, the money she wanted to return to us so that we can help other more needy people. Mm. You know, I think that's our moral compass. Yeah. That's the money we need to make good use of. Thank you. I think we'll leave it at that. Right. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you.